Uh, the First Congregational Church has revised their request to be just for the ADA um, uh, handicap ramp to the building, which is less complicated. Um, other than that, I think we just have to plow through. <clears throat> so we a bit of a clarification, you know, uh, Michael and I came up with this chart that has the red and the blue in it. Um, Everybody has one. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, basically the, the source of income are, are, uh, are effectively uh, undesignated funds, which have never applied money that was previously put in a bucket that hasn't been uh, applied to any project. <laughs> And then for fiscal year 23, the assumption is that there's um, $328,500 in revenue. And I guess traditionally, you guys don't really you try to keep the next year's in the reserve for the following year. So, so this basically reflects uh, no spend of that fiscal year 23 money. It's simply the money that is currently in one of the, those four, you know, undesignated areas. Actually, what we've done is we've we've spent the projected fiscal 23. Exactly. I thought that was true too, but if, if that's the case, then we have a million dollars to spend. We're not so they found a lot of, they found a lot of um, errors in the accounting to our favor that happened over the last 20 years when, when the, you know, with the new team in town hall. And so the numbers got really big in terms of what was sort of lost in the shuffle over the years, uh, specifically around the undesignated. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> we always like to have more money. The, the accounting has always been a little bit of a mystery to me. Um, better now. So yeah, the, so this is great. So, um, but what we have done is we have considered what we anticipate getting this year. So that was the three hundred and twenty-eight thousand or whatever whatever the number is. The bottom line is if we fund everything on this sheet without the red items that we can't fund for legal reasons, we're still have, um, we still have uh, something like, uh, I'll take Jack in a second. Um, well, that's this page here. If, if the income is $328,500, the remainder, what's the remainder? Uh, one, five, last line in bold is all those amounts. It's 431,582 in total. We'll still be remaining. Let's see where that is. So if you look at the um, the uh, the second page of, of this red, in the last line as it goes across, it shows all of the fund balances if we fund everything. And it still leaves 431,000 for next year. You know. <coughs> I don't see where that is. Uh, Sally, <laughs> I have a question. The last one. <clears throat> there are funds, for example, Jay. Jay? Hi. Jay, last year we awarded you $100,000, but, um, but you didn't spend it. And last year, if I remember, we gave thousands and forty-five thousand. They didn't spend, spend it. So does that mean if you take this four thirty-one five eighty-two, you have to subtract? No, no, because no, that because money is not, fund. is not undesignated. That's the difference. That, that, okay, where's the undesignated? Balance? We didn't even list them. The only one I put on there because we talked about it is the composting toilet. Right. So if we if we if we um, return. Uh, uh, pull that back. We're actually going to have almost five hundred thousand dollars next year to start with before the appropriation. So, but traditionally we have spent what we are getting this year. Oh, okay. Just, just trying to clarify. Um, and uh, occasionally we have said this is a, such an important project or we're so invested in this project that we want to take money out of the undesignated right. reserves. Anything that has been voted, where it gets dicey and, and sort of confusing 
is when we say, okay, we're expecting to get a 30% match from the, from the state. And it turns out that it's a banner year and we get 75% match from the state. But we haven't voted that, we haven't considered that, we haven't done anything with that. So that comes in, but it goes into undesignated because we haven't voted it to go somewhere. And trying to get that information has sometimes been um, uh, confusing. And so um, this is great that we have a, a much more thorough uh, accounting of where the money is and, and what we have to spend. And I think that we can um, we can consider I'm still confused by this though, Patrick. Yeah. Well, okay, so why don't I just walk through it, okay? Yeah. So if you look at the sheet that um, there's two headings in the top left. One it says includes next year's funds. It's the second page. You want to look at that one. It's the second line of that top left box area, uh, area CPC analysis. One of them is just through fiscal year 22, and the other one is fiscal year 23. Okay. Do you wave that page right because mine's in black. Uh, they're printed out right there. Yeah. I've got one. Okay. I, I need to see your page so I can see the bars. It's just this, these first two lines. Okay. One of them is just 22, which is this fiscal year, and the other one starts after town meeting. Okay. All right, I'm still confused. Yeah, I'm having trouble making okay, so, uh, uh, well, Mike is going to put up on the screen, but that's okay. So on this sheet here, up here, if it says fiscal year 2023, you want to look at it. Well, none of us have, have it. This is have it. This is this count that have that. I don't have it. Patrick. I know I don't have it. Unless it's I don't it's have it. it. I shrunk it, Patrick. I think it's on the same little page page here. Fiscal year 2023. Oh my God. It's on the back side All of page right. one, isn't it? Yeah. See, so the page is on page one. All right. Okay, is it this? No. It's um, and, uh, it looks uh, like there was a whole it's, it's, it's just little out here. Yeah. Or just take one of these right here if you don't have it. I have it. Okay. But I don't have that page, is what I'm trying to make you understand. That's a different one that you're looking at. Okay, part of one. We no. only did this one last night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I took one it one off here. the table today. This one. So. Right. So, so and I reconfigured it so it was one. Page. Linda, look at this. That's why they paid. And uh, look. With three black marks. Honestly, you know? honestly, just pick up this sheet right in front of you. It's staple. Okay, I understand mine. This is the same. Okay, I took it out of the oh. file, so I'm going to find something different here. That's just all I need to know. Yeah. Well, it's, um, if you, I, I can circle it if you want. Sure. Okay. I'll be on the same page. Because the numbers are getting a little uh, fuzzy. This is not, this is um, maybe an old one. This is not. Yeah, the you don't have the right ones. I'm not going to make a copy that's of this. The one, that's the seconds. one that I would got. You, would you like me to throw up on, uh, sorry. Yeah, would you like me to throw up on the screen? That'd be great. I typed it out in the categories and all I did was put their requests and I can fill it in as we go along. So you can see exactly where you are. Okay, so, so sorry, did you change the one I sent you this morning? I didn't know you sent one. No. Okay. This morning, because I was in another Zoom meeting. It's okay, but it's it's formatted to fit the screen. Is all I'm saying. I, I just made it so that it all fit together. All right. Um, so I'm going to just make uh, ten copies of this. I'll be back in two seconds. Ooh. Careful. Okay. okay. That's the insurance. You may not be coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After that, he may be going somewhere else. <laughs> Are you going to share a screen, Michael? I will. I'm logging to the meeting right now, Sally. I apologize for my right. other meeting going long. You mean you can't control the world? Try to. Oh. <laughs> Jay was already picking on me about that this morning. <laughs> so this one that I have that I printed out is obsolete. Is that he's what I have? He's making a copy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My earliest ones are even more confusing because I didn't realize that the toner had run out. So there was the color and the whole lines were gone. Yeah, Try so hard to make the math work. Here I thought this was so good. I spent I spent about an hour and a half this morning reconfiguring this so that it would go on one page figuring out how to print it, which, because it kept making it go over here. I should have been like this one email. 
This I emailed Patrick and said it's not printable, and so he reformatted it. Yeah, I made it smaller. So so this one, this one. one yeah. The only page we need? The one that I'm holding, yeah. All right. And once you pass these, take one and pass it down. If you don't have it, I have this it. Is right? the ex this is the extent you, you of my it. ability to understand a spreadsheet. That's okay. I'm just saying. Thank you. I'm going to take you get one of these? one away so he doesn't get mixed it. up. Okay. <laughs> have you got one there, Gary? I do. Oh, good. I feel confident in that I have one. And prepared. So, can you, Michael, can you go to the, the, the bottom? The one through fiscal year 2023. You can't open the one I sent, right? Yeah, he doesn't have it. So I just, so what I did is I just threw it's, up. It's this there one, Michael. is your original, there is your original requests, Michael Foss. And there are all blank areas on the other side with proofs in here and everything. So as you so we don't decide on where you want to put funds. Okay, I can. I get it, but they just they they just pointed out that we usually fund with next year's money. That's always been the way we do it. You guys just found so much money for us when you did this excellent accounting job that we're in much better shape than we thought. This one, mine is a little bit more viewable than than yours was. So I think we should just go by the printed spreadsheet for now. Are you wanting to to do it? Um. Okay, so however the board would like to do it. Yes. So Sally, Sally, what? Ask him to take that down or we're gonna get crazed again. I mean it's all the same numbers. Basically that this is just a blank one where you guys can fill in the numbers and it'll tell us what our remaining balance is of this year's funds. Okay. Well we can and start working if you're with under that. that, then you're good period. Yeah. Okay, so if you look at the top line, those are the these, like, uh, the un uh, the undesignated fund balances for each category. So it's basically whatever hasn't been assigned to another project in housing, hundred thousand four eighty one. In uh, yeah, okay, good. Um, historic is one ninety eight nine oh seven. Open space one thirty seven one fifty eight. And finally, including the money that, that we're assuming with a 50% match for this year, we've got $566,852 in uh, that is not in one of the other buckets for a total of a million dollars that has been unassigned to other projects. There you go. How's that? Good. So this top line. There's all your totals. Is, is all undesignated. That's correct. Well, yeah, yeah I mean. Um, I mean, undesignated as in it's not assigned to a specific housing project or a specific historic yeah. preservation it's project. Avail I, I think available is a better term. Undesignated okay. versus one of the three buckets or available versus already, account already um, uh, you know, promised to somebody. Yes. Okay. So then down below, what are the figures at the bottom then? I'm confused yeah. as to what those the figures are. at the bottom are um six let's just start with the housing what's the sixty seven thousand dollars uh you say at the bottom oh yeah, yeah. that's tos <laughs> affordable housing sixty seven thousand dollars what is that figure okay so one of the things that has been happening is because money that comes back from projects that's left over whatever these balances kind of went up over the years right each one of the buckets right so michael and i thought that it's just simply accounting that it might be better if all of the money that we had available was undesignated so we spent down out of the like applied categories the buckets first rather than so it's where it's coming from basically the 67 is what we gave to Jay, it's the part out of the 125 mm -hmm. that came out of this 100,000, Sally. And the balance of the 125 right. came out of this allocation. So we gave him 125, but we broke up where it came from. So in the unexpended 100,000, 67 went to Jay's 
uh, the housing uh, trust. Housing trust fund. Thank God, Jay. Thank That's you. That's okay. Housing and the trust Jay trust by Cosby improvement. And that Eddie. left us thirty. <laughs> that left us thirty-three in that bucket. Right. And if you look to the right of that number, you see this fifty-eight coming out of the undesignated bucket. So it adds up to one hundred and twenty-five, which is what the request right. is. So. So this method allows us to, you know, Sally, not worry about yes. what's left in buckets. I just Sally. called up yours if you guys would like to. I dropped it Sally. in here. Sally, got it? No. Okay. So <laughs> ask me something. No, I'm just. This is confusing the daylight. No, to me. Can, she's confused. Sally, can I can I show you here? Yeah, except I, I can't see that part. <laughs> so <laughs> the what, what I've done is, is I pulled up Patrick's. I dropped everything into the sheet so we can see it now. What we have is we have the original request on this side. We've got our available funds that meet our 10% requirement plus historic funding that we make these accounts, the numbers that Patrick will tell us. Then what I have is then we have where these accounts are coming out of. And then the proof is is over here that if this number matches the request, then here it goes to zero. So we have a proof on our spreadsheet. So Michael. Yes. I can't see the number on the extreme right. Could you just tell me one million? What is it? Twenty-seven eight ninety-nine. All right, I got yep. it. Thank you, Jay. Thank so you. if you decide, I can go in right now live and change any amount. If you decide on a different amount, which will then run all of our balances and make sure that everything is uh, <clears throat> is correct. Right. And. The point it out was right. If there's, for example, the housing trust, you take 67 from the reserve, take 57, 58 from the undesignated. Once again, it bet, it proves out that we're fully funding that to the hundred. Right. That's All right. I get, I get it now because the, the, the 67,000 was what we already voted, what we voted this that's year. Right. Okay. That's fine. That's what I was trying to figure out. Where did okay. the money come from? Right. So we also voted the 58. Right. Different bucket. Different bucket. Okay. Okay. I got it. Sally, yes. May I ask a question? Sure. Can a member of the public in the calculus? Uh, yeah. Sure. I mean, it's, it's a public record. It's a public it's record. It's them, so there should be uh, some around. She's an extra copy. Yeah. She's a hit. Gary, you need another one? No. One page. Let me make sure you uh, hit the admin budget for 60 cents for these 12 copies. Tom. Yeah. They took back the other ones. They were wrong. Oh, they this took them back. One okay. page was, we're dealing with. Okay, thank you. All right, you're yeah. more than welcome. I think you were out of the room. I was out of the room. So I fixed it for you. Thank you. So you didn't come back and start working with the wrong page. Okay, thank you. All right, so. Explain. Now, what about what we voted the other meeting? That's in here too. There are yes. well, they're, they're, it's on the list. Yeah. They look under wooden Request. siding, the thirty-three thousand. Then look across, and we're taking it out of that bucket. See if it's in parentheses, and then it's in a bucket. Right. Then that's a minus. Right. Uh, okay, so the seventy thousand that we we allocated for construct is there. Yes. Um, 33, 5. Bull Meadows in there. 29. Okay, that's there. That's the fountain. I don't see the fountain. It's town of Stockbridge Fountain. Town of Stockbridge yep. Fountain. No, I see it there. Four. Where do I see it? My thousand. Where? Where? I need a I need mean, that. Where do, <laughs> there's where you took it out. Okay. Got it. I was an art major. What can I tell you? If it's not visual, I can't understand it. I, listen, all I can tell you is for years, you've been the best chair of this committee. Well, so, you. and you're satisfied, I'm satisfied. All right, so, and under, let's see, we've got under under historic preservation down, we see the town of Stockbridge Fountain Basement, $40,000. Um, and that we voted. Yep. And two things for- and The library for two, 2712, we voted. That's also under historic preservation. Can we just, uh, since we're all on this list, go quickly down it and check off the ones we've already approved? That's what I'm doing. And I can highlight them as we go along. The ones in parentheses. 
They're the ones in parentheses, Tom. But they aren't oh, all. Sure. They aren't all in parentheses. No, no, no. Oh, they're not. So we stop at. We, let's start at the top of the page. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So the top. This is the top of my my rudimentary little little um, spreadsheet that I understand. I don't know whether it makes sense to anybody else, but I, it makes sense to me. So, and since I'm the chair, it has to make sense to me or I can't do it. So the top request was the Norman Rockwell Museum for 4,999. Oh, no, no, let's go down this list. No. That's what everyone's looking at. I can't do it that way. I can't do it that way. She is the chair. So, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna translate what we did at the last meeting to this sheet that you made, Patrick. Okay. So that's, that's, where, that's how we're going to do this. Okay. So we, we did the $4,999 to the Norman Rockwell Museum. That's under the administrative um, column. And it's the only thing in the administrative column and we voted that. So that's, that's done. The next one is construct for $70,000. That's under undesignated. Um, down toward the bottom, you'll see the $70,000. We voted that. That's the driveway. Yes. Yeah, it's the driveway. Then next is the Stockbridge Housing Authority for uh, 33000 Siding. Uh, $529. That's, where is that? I found that. Where did it go? On the, look to the left. It's the SHA. It's the last one on the list of uh, the new one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it's the bottom one. It's the bottom number of the undesignated um, list. Why is it undesignated? Or does it just say, because shouldn't those be under housing? Yeah. No, no, no. There's not enough in the original undesignated pot to pay for all of our housing projects. You would like it in that pot. I can move it over. It says A -H. It should be under housing. A -H. No, can we just stop for one second? Because there's a disconnect with understanding it. There's only so much to start with historically in each of the buckets. Right. That we're, so once we run out, we took out the rest from the undesignated bucket. Because I get that, but the application was filed under affordable housing. It is, but undesignated can go to any of those types of projects. Okay. Um, uh, the Housing Trust Committee, we voted $125,000, which is. Second to last. 67, All right. All right, I'm confused again. Yeah, Sal, can we go back a second? Because when we voted for the $125,000, we voted um, that we were going to take $110,000 out of this year, but I don't see I don't see where that's reflected. We don't have 110,000 in there. We only have 100. I know we did talk about that, but I think that there was confusions as to the accounting with the with the old reference materials we were using. So. All right, but be that as it may, that's what we voted. Yeah, and and if and also Sal on the same thing. Assuming a sixty-seven thousand, which just for the purpose of conversation, assume it for a minute. We could take the 33 529 out of housing. We'd only be $48 short. Does it clear it up in your mind if we do that and just take $48.29 out of what you call it? Or looking at it your way, if we take 110 out of housing, and the 33529 out of housing, then we'll be short 58, uh, $58,048.29, and we could take that amount out of undesignated. All I'm asking is, does that make more sense to you? Well, I, I think what I'm trying to get at is the fact that we voted for these things. I understand. So, so what we voted like, was right. we're going to take $110,000 out of this year. Right. We were going to take 67,000 out of the affordable housing reserve and we were going to take 52,000 out of undesignated. That's what we voted. All right. 
So I, I think one way or another, we need to reconcile what we voted with what we're doing. Um, and we can why don't we just rescind, rescind our, our votes from the other yeah. meeting and, and just reflect the new vote when we're finished with this right. spreadsheet? We can do that. We can do that. But I just want to make sure that we're doing that, you know, so that we're our dot eyes are dotted and T's are crossed. So I suspected at the last meeting that we were undercounting because of the the number at the top was 695 and the number at the bottom was 328. And I thought we had a million, including next year's money and the fiscal year 23. And it turns out we did. So we were thinking we had less money. One good way to look at this is that proof number, 1,027,000, is so much bigger than a normal year. It doesn't matter what bucket things come out of this year because we easily have more than enough money to cover all the minimums. But it matters by law. I, it doesn't matter. I'm saying we have to spend 10%. We're going to do that if we fund the projects we've even already identified. Right. All right. So, you know, the, the bottom line is where we're, we're, we have 500, if we fund everything, we have 591,000 in fundable projects and we have a million and 27,000 to spend, which gives us 431,000 left over. And that's before the composting toilet, which is another 65,000. So I'm just saying we, we, which bucket comes out of this one year is less important because we found, well, Michael and his team found so much, you know. Well, I wouldn't the, define it as found. Yeah, windfall. It, it is the money you have left over yes. from the year before. <laughs> We're going to make sure that 10% gets put into every category, which is why you end up with 100,000, 491, 198, each of those categories. And however you designate at the end, whatever you don't designate from those will be balances that will be carried over into the following year, which you'll have to meet as minimums in those categories. So, um, so regardless I don't, of how much we have available, I still think it's important to discuss the merits of each project. Sure. And not necessarily fund. I'm not suggesting any, yeah, any decisions. I'm simply yeah. pointing out what the numbers say. Yeah. All right. So, um, so to go back where, to where we were, um, let's get let's get through this list. So, Friends of Gould Meadows was fifteen. Thousand six hundred fifty dollars, mm -hmm. um, which we voted, and I am looking for. So yeah, I don't. So the one difficulty with the uh, gold medal request is two of those were identified as having to come out of the historical right, market, which I have separated on that spreadsheet. And the one. It was separated on the spreadsheet that we didn't. We ended up not using. It's on the new one. It's, yeah, they're all, I think there's seven of them total. One, two, three, four, six. All right, so let's just get the figures right. <clears throat> so the milk shed and the paint we're going to come out of historic preservation and that's twenty nine hundred dollars. Yeah. And we voted that. All right. So that's so that's in under the historic preservation. There's one that's twenty five hundred and there's one that's four hundred. So those were voted. Question. When we say recreational, does it, what does that come out of? There's not a recreational bucket. It um, used to be open space recreation. and recreation, but the recreational point part is is described differently. Right. And it has different. Um, Just says no minimum. Is that the difference? You don't have to. It doesn't have a minimum. No. So open space and recreation gets. And oh, I know what I was going to say. Elaine always used to, um, and we can change whatever. She it made sense to me. She always used to require us to have 15% in each category. And the reason for that was if we fell desperately short um, with our state match, that we would still be in compliance with the 10% for each for each category. Okay. So for whatever that's worth, it's it's worth thinking about. Okay, so that's what we voted. Um, 
now. We have to go back and figure out what we're going to vote now. And I, I am not, I'm not in favor of spending out all our money. So I, I think we need to be, we need to be mindful about what we want to keep in our reserves. So we, we just talked about one, two, three, four, five, six projects. Is right. All we voted. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, okay. just seven. <laughs> What's the, um, okay. The Norman Rockwell Museum. Yep. Yeah. Stockbridge Housing Authority, yep. Town Housing Trust, yep. the Fountain Committee, the Stockbridge Library, and Friends of Gould Meadows. So oh, for Friends sense. of Gould Meadows, did we uh, vote all six components? We voted the total amount, yes. Yeah. Because somehow this. All right, so that's unsafe trees and stumps too, yep. then, right? Yep. And I thought we also voted for Ice Glen. Didn't we reduce the signs or not do the no, signs? No, we had. Yes, we, 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 um, we approved the, um, just bear with me one second, the, uh, those, the signs. No, we didn't. No, we did not. Signs. No. The signs were not approved. Okay. We did not, we did not vote anything beyond those ones that I just went through. Okay, so we have to go Discussed. back to Ice Glen. Uh, okay. We discussed, but we did not vote. Okay. So with Ice Glen, can we discuss that now? Mm -hmm. We can. I suggest that taking care of the Willie Adelgid seems to be very, somewhat urgent and is definitely a priority. And it's also a large amount of money. And I think with the Ice Glen request, that should be the focus and that we ought to uh, defer on the sign request. I think that's not, uh, and Shelby acknowledged that as much at uh, our last meeting. And I think that signs are something that are apt to uh, take up a lot of time in town meeting. People feel strongly about signs. And I just think we're already giving a huge amount to Ice Glen. The, uh, the case was made persuasively, and I think we should defer on the signs. Um, at our last discussion, I have a note in my notes that the signs for Ice Glen was a negative from this committee. So okay. I have the same note. Yes. yes. We already voted right. it down. We, we, it, it, was, uh, it wasn't an official vote, but we didn't want to take it any further. Okay. It was not an official vote. So it was I, not an official vote. I suggest we make an official vote now. Can, I, can we have a discussion if we're going to have a discussion? Yeah. A uh, couple of things. One, we were making decisions last time thinking that we had half the amount of money we currently have. I think that the question we have here is it's not, we're not giving things to anything to anybody. This is the taxpayer's money, okay? The taxpayer voted in CPC, so we would apply that money for community preservation project. Our job, I believe, is to evaluate whether these meet the criteria and if we have the funds available. And, 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 and I'm not gonna make a judgment as to what the Agriculture and Forestry Commission, which now manages Ice Glen, they meet every once a month. They've been meeting regularly. This is what they believe they need for their their committee meetings. I haven't been to all of them. I don't know if so anybody pa else. So, Patrick, I, I don't. I'm, I'm just saying that I don't know that we want to start. Um, you know, uh, applying judgments. I guess if, the, if I think if the projects are are um, are fundable and the money is there. I understand we don't want to spend down to zero, but my God, we would still have, you know, so half a million dollars. Finish? Yeah. I, I think it is our job to make judgments. That's what we're appointed to do is to make judgments. And just because the money is there doesn't mean we have to spend it. I think we're, we've made a huge step here in uh, investing in this tree treatment. I think the signs is likely to be a controversial thing anyway. And I think we ought to defer on that and stick to our priorities, but if it's notwithstanding the points you've just made. Let the voters vote it down. 
Well, I think that could be, uh, as I said earlier, I, I think it's our job to screen and it, that could be a 20 minute or a half hour discussion at town meeting. And I honestly think we should be focusing on our priorities here. If I can inject a point, working through this, if there is negative discussion on any one of these items, why don't we defer any action till the end? Let's approve the ones that we're all in, in concurrence with, and then we'll pick those up at the end to determine where we go. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes. Because otherwise we'll be bogged down. But, but, I, but not on the sign. But we also, because we thought we had a lot less, we cut the request. Request was for 85. I think we voted in 70 or 75. I'm sure we didn't vote in the entire amount. Did we? we haven't voted any vote. Haven't voted anything on that yet. We voted on Ice Glen trees. Well, yeah. <laughs> the the official the we took no. three official votes. The construct driveway was voted seventy thousand seven to zero. The uh, the uh, thirty three thousand for the uh, the housing authority was voted seven zero. The hundred and twenty five thousand for the housing trust was voted seven zero. Those were the three votes that we took towards the, at the end of the last meeting. Did the fountain? I thought we did. We 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 did not vote on the fountain. We had yeah, we did. We had we, concurrence we on did the fountain. At the very end, we did vote. Yeah, on the we fountain. Did we did vote. So let's just. This is what we voted. We voted for the Norman Rockwell Museum. We voted fully fully funding all of these. Rockwell Museum construct the housing authority, the housing trust, the fountain the Stockbridge Library, and Friends of Gould Meadows. And they were all unanimous except for the cat and dog fountain, which Tom abstained. Yep. yep. OK. All right. This is my half-assed way of making sure I know what I'm doing. All right, yeah. so you have seven items here, yes. right? Yes, and One, I also two, have three, over here. Six, seven. I also That's have here who made the motion and who seconded. Motion. Yeah. Good. That's my, this is my shorthand for how I keep minutes. So are we going to approve the tree treatment or is that controversial too? Um, so we need to, we need to start, should we go down this? Does everybody have this little stupid list? Yeah. Okay. And how, so now I'm one short from you. I have Rockwell Construct, Stockbridge Housing, the Housing Trust, that's four. Yeah. Stockbridge Library, five. Gould Meadows, Meadows, six. Where's seven? Fountain Committee, up above this library. Yeah, we, that was a yes for $4,000. Voted for that. Oh, I know why I didn't have a check. I couldn't find it. Okay, Tom, I just found it. Tom abstained on that one. So I remember. I have a special note on that, so I know we did. Got it. All right, so going down this list, um, Berkshire Scenic Railway is asking for $15,000 to restore their concrete apron, a handicap ramp, and electrical upgrade. We, um, we, dismissed the um, concerns of town council right? Um, because they will be using this for community events um, and the money, any proceeds will be going to the museum, which is a not-for-profit, um, which were the concerns of um, town council that it was going to go into some sort of private use and was never going to be out there again. And they're on the National Register. And they're on the National Register, so they qualify under the um, auspices of the uh, Historic pr uh, Preservation. So, want to vote for that? Can, can I interrupt for a minute? I'm sorry, I'm a member of the public and representing Berkshire Scenic. Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you for reviewing our application. I just wanted to clarify that um, in this application, we are not asking for funding for the electrical upgrade. I think we stated it in the application as future projects, um, but the 15,000 is only gonna be towards the concrete apron work and the handicap ramp. Right, okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that the electrical was gonna be approvable anyway. Um, 
All right, so for the, for the restoration of the concrete apron and the handicap ramp, they're asking $15,000. Discussion, comments, thoughts, motions? I move that we approve it. Right, second, or did you second it? I think we've got a second. Okay, great. You can fight over who was first. No, it's all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Steve, Knopf, you need to unmute. Uh, he's, he's here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight people on the. She's oh. trying to get the eight. He's no, eight. I know. I understand. I don't see him. Sorry, right. I'm, I'm here. I'm in favor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So then it's unanimous. Yeah. So that's eight oh. Yes, that's eight. Mike, can you readjust so we see the people? Thank you. We, we were just seeing their names anyway, so I don't know how important it is. Okay, okay so that's done. All right, First Congregational Church, $100,000 for ADA. We went through the discussion of the church um, versus state, and our position has been for the last 20 years that we consider this a building and not a religious institution because it qualifies under historic preservation and it has all its provenance for that. Um, and until, unless and until the town of Atkin finally gets a resolution to their lawsuit, we will, without objection, continue to look at it that way. Um, so, discussion, <laughs> comments, motions, Look, I think it's a big project. I think we're the second oldest town in the state. Having um, having uh, walkways that are safe for the elderly, I think is a really important thing for all these community events. Uh, and I think we should approve it. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve for 100,000. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Steve? In favor. Okay, thank you. All right, unanimous. All right, Town of Stockbridge, Glendale Fire Station restoration. Linda, were you gonna have a conversation with them on which parts, the whole project 75,000. So we're assuming that the parts that are a little more maintenance, a little less historic would come out of the town warrant item. Um, but uh, Wait, they're having a town warrant item as well? Because it's the total project amount is 75,000. Oh, okay. So we, we put, we figured Forgot that. 50 percent of it might be historic or it would be historic. I haven't spoken to them, but I think the problem is that they have a really kind of random plan at this point with no priorities. So we need to figure out how that can be attacked. As I recall, they were going to do some we, more research and get back to us. So right. I'm wondering just, if we could uh, make a tentative approval, pending approval from. Everyone. I'm hoping to have because I, I remember you, you wanted the comparison where if we did vinyl siding mm -hmm. instead of clapboard. So we're trying to get numbers together. Um, <coughs> You know, if you if if you, if you want to pull a meeting later for this one or something, if you or I'm not sure how you want to proceed on this one. Could we we pass, haven't been able to pull everything together with just the time frame. Approve it uh, pending that they meet can, the criteria. Can, that can I interject one point? Sure. Um, there are budget discussions going on next week. Next week will be a budget meeting, a combined meeting with the select board and the finance committee. Finance committee has asked the fire chief for details on the renovation of the Glendale station. Specifically, what are we using it for? What's it for? I think we ought to hear what he's got to say. You know, it makes sense to me. He is going to come back to us on that as part of his presentation. Sally, we given could, what- We could put a motion though that's incumbent on you on the finance committee uh, approving their plans and then we wouldn't have to meet again. That's a great idea. Yes. Clearly they're yeah. gonna do their homework. So um, 
Could we, Everyone uh, needs to see it. Could we cool. say pending finance committee and the board of selectmen? Yeah. Yeah. So I would make that motion. But I think we also have to make sure, though, that there's at least 37,500 that is not maintenance and that has uh, historic preservation. Yeah, you know, they've got to come up with that criteria. amount. Yeah. If they can't come up with the, the, the full amount, then it's going to be the amount they come up with. Yes. Yeah. All right, so we're going to, um, Gary, can you amend your, your motion to say that we're going, we are going to recommend up to 37 yes, five, yes. That's right. Um, pending the pending approval, of, approval uh, of the FinCon. Subject to approval of the, finance, of the select board and finance select board. Okay. So it needs a second. Second. Oh. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Steve? Aye. Unanimous. Subjectivity on that. Subject to. All right. Uh, so the historic education plan for the town of Stockbridge was deemed to be um, on not approvable right. um, by both the historic commission and the Town Council. Uh, Cambusa Bog Hydrologic. Can we just ignore it? We just ignore it. Okay. Um, the the Ham Cambusa Bog Hydrological Assessment was also considered to be um, not provable, so we don't need to consider that. Um, Town of Stockbridge, $8,750 for the Ice Glen interpretive signs. Do we want to move that to the bottom and talk about that when we're done? Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. So Laurel Hill Association, revitalization of Upper Bowker's Woods, um, $23,176. Um, there was some question from Town Council regarding um, whether the uh, conservation restriction was needed. Um, and we, uh, we concluded that uh, the relationship between Laurel Hill and the town has been so solid and so longstanding that we did not feel that it was a risk to allow um, funding to this particular organization. So we can? That's what we decided. Okay. Um, In this present, we've funded other projects. Of right, exactly. Not a conservation restriction. Right. I motion to approve the 23,176. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Steve? Aye. Thank you. All right, unanimous. Town of Stockbridge, Kayak River Launch. Um, fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, can you explain kind of the idea? I, I sort of mashed it up last time. Uh, it's basically to put the stones in the water, similar to what is it in Egremont? Uh, Sheffield, yeah, Sheffield. by the bridge, yeah. So yeah, this was the um, the floating dock, the metal floating dock. Um, we want to repurpose that potentially at the bowl for kayaks at the beach and instead put a stone step path, if you will, or stairs um, on the Park Street entrance where they launch the canoes. So that's what this will cover sort of like the engineering study and um, the plans for that. And you'll have to come to conservation for it. Okay. Because yes, you're I'll doing work, time. you're doing work the prior in, the river, in the river. Yes. Correct. Yep. But we can't fund engineering plans. This isn't, this is the actual, what? This is the actual built, we already have. Okay, so the plans are not being This will be for. the construction, installation, and the Okay, rest good. Of, of a kayak lot. There is an outside chance that DCR had been in talk with of whether or not they could assist in some of the work possibly. Okay. But if we don't put the money up and that doesn't come through, then it wouldn't happen. So there is an opportunity that this 
there's a division of DCR that actually has construction equipment that does the work. I've been in touch with their engineer and they might assist us in developing that because they like the idea of the dock being moved to the bowl because those docks have not worked well on rivers <laughs> due to the, they, the river fluctuates too much. It's actually been in the air at times and then it's been so full of water that the dock is actually right. pulling itself up. So um, <clears throat> there is an outside chance that this could end up being returned to this committee next year. That's always good. <laughs> so can we, do you want to, should we do a conditional motion, Michael? I don't think I would just to. do a motion and then we would just submit that the project was funded by another source. And I make a motion that we approve the 15,000 for the kayak. Market. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Steve? Aye. Okay, unanimous. All right, Town of Stockbridge kayak canoe rent launch at the Town Beach. Um, I am particularly in favor of this because it's already, the, the dock has already been voted and paid for by CPA money. So I would really like to see it not sitting in a garage somewhere. Um, the $20,000. Um, the project cost us 40. I mean, we could just fund the whole project, I mean. We already spent $25,000 on this project. So I'm, I'm not saying that- well, This isn't could, just the recreation part. This is also getting rid of those fragmites. I understand. And it's planting natives and, you know. I understand. Yeah, here's what I don't understand. I thought that there was some push or something to have all the boat launches at the boat ramp. But this is another launch, kayak launch, at Town Beach. So that's okay. We've already the racks there. I know the racks are already there. So uh, we are looking at the DCR putting in kayak launch at the boat ramp. But DCR does not allow storage of kayaks on state property. So you can't store private property on public property um, by the state. We have we have the racks at the beach, and we are also looking at possibly additional racks down at the outlet at the dam, the cove, so that people can store their kayaks and then launch from those sites. So this would be creating a beachfront path through instead of people launching the boats in the swim area, which is something you shouldn't be doing. This would put the launch of boats from the beach over to the side. We'd create a path through, and it, it, while well, creating that path, we would remove the fragmites and the invasive species and store the rest of the area in front, and then have a path wide enough to take a canoe or kayak through out onto that metal ramp that we have and have the launch there. Okay, and then answer me another thing. So, so Sally's worried about something or another that's in storage and then we've got another no, no, one no, that's the one that's in storage that's basically the one that we moved that off sitting yes okay but, but no, that's the, the one that they moved off the river is going to the beach. Going to the beach i understand so what's the one in storage that the one, one is storage. Storage. oh good all it right floated so we away it went down and hit the bridge all right i only have one last question <laughs> for anybody who knows the answer um, there's something about worrying. We're supposed to worry about what's on the bottom of boats. Yes. That goes into the lake. Okay. At the boat ramp, we've got to wash off the bottom thing. Yes. Do we have a wash off the bottom thing at the beach? We don't, but people are supposed to be storing and then only using them there. That's my understanding of how the town is operated. That's how that gets controlled. Right. It's not for people to launch. It's only for people to launch that are storing their beaches on the racks. Oh, two things. Stable. It's imperfect. I've seen people launch at the causeway. I've seen them launch after hours at the beach. I mean, yeah. you know, unless you want to call the police, people don't either know or don't care. Here, here's so, the thing. It's our this best is, effort. This is 2009 and we're getting washing started. Who will be bringing their kayaks to the other to the beach? Are they going to be Stockbridge residents? They're yeah, typically that, that was my residents question. or second homeowners. That was my last. And Steve, so how, how, Steve understands the, the process for the rack system. If Steve, you could explain. Sure. So the kayaks are provided as a courtesy to residents, um, which we consider second homeowners as as residents. They must apply for a permit 
And in that application process, there are two agreements that they electronically sign. One is, I guess, an, an indemnification against damage or personal injury and the other, uh, or damaged or lost or stolen kayaks. Um, the other is that they agree to store the kayak at the beach for the entire season and not bring it into another body of water. Um, and if they agree to both of those, they will be issued and pay for a permit for, for the season and be able to store it on, on the racks. Uh, we do have signs up saying no outside boats can be launched at the beach. They have to go to the cause, or sorry, to the boat ramp across the lake. But the only way we can enforce that is when we have lifeguards on duty. Um, and uh, yes. that's, that's a bit of a, um, I guess, uh, a loophole because we don't always have lifeguards on duty. So people can come and, and they do launch their boats from out of, out of town people. And even then the lifeguards are not police officers. I mean, they can ask them not to do it, but. Well, because there's a person at the other landing yeah. watching this. Uh, not all the time, certain hours. Yeah, but That's the, the popular the hours, yes. let's right. put it that way. But I think it's just inviting kind of an open door here to some <laughs> confusions. Um, you know, that water is just so precious. The, this lake gets contaminated. We're just going to lose our I guess I would just heritage. state one thing is that we're still going to have the racks and people launching from the beach. It's just the location of where they're going to be launching that we're asking to create a better one so they're not launching the boat through the swimming area. I, I get that. I totally get it. I just, the control of who gets to put their boat in was confusing to me and not a stated policy anywhere. So. But that my understanding from what Michael said and, and Steve said is that they have to have a permit in order to store their boats there. So have to it's not just there. random. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the request with the provision that uh, very clear signage go up that this is only for use of those boats that are registered to be in the racks. And as part of my motion is that it be for the amount that's been requested, not to volunteer that we would uh, <laughs> put more into it, but for the amount requested with those provisions. Does Sorry. anyone know the current wording of the sign that's there? Pardon? Do you know the current wording of the sign no, there? No, I, I would leave it up to, but just. Well, I mean, I'm not challenging you. I'm just asking. Maybe Steve can oh, tell us there is a there's, sign that yep. we did here. There, there's two signs. One at the driveway entrance to the beach that says, yeah. uh, okay. "Boat launching strictly prohibited. Please use boat ramp um, on Route 183." And then when you walk in from the parking lot, there is a second sign that says. Um, only kayaks or boats stored on um, a town rack with a permit are allowed to be launched at the beach. Some, I paraphrase that just a little bit, but that's essentially what it says. That seems, that seems reasonably. So is that second sign going to be right by where this new launch is? Um, we, um, so, um, you can relocate it, Steve. Well, it's it's a it has the other rules of the beach, like no animals allowed. Uh, yeah. Beach opens at sunrise, closes at sunset. Please obey lifeguards at all times. So, it's it's got sort of you know it's a welcome sign with <clears throat> sorry with the rules. So um, we can consider adding um, another another sign down where the new launch will be. We can certainly. No, do I that. think that would. Uh... I think Linda's concerns are, are well taken, and I think yep. that would provide some additional level of security. And to some extent, uh, as Patrick says, nothing is, you know, watched over 24-7. Um, so, you know, to some extent, People are on the honor system. Here, you put but. a trail camera down there if it gets to be, you know, a zoo. Um, but I, I think it's hard to put that on a, a lifeguard. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. Think that's. I I would also like to see added into your permit, um, Steve and Michael, that these boats have been washed. Yeah. Before they've been brought down or or otherwise decontaminated. Yes. Subject to check to see if, if that yeah. wording's in there. It might be, but yeah, good, great suggestion. See, I was opposed to this until Michael explained that you can't store kayaks at the boat ramp. And if you're going to store them at Town Beach, by gosh, <clears throat> they're going to launch them and they're going to bring them back into Town Beach. It doesn't make sense. So I'm very sad about that. I wish all the launching were in one place instead of breaking it up. And I love, Steve, I love the river launch. That's just great. Um, and I just wish that we only had one place, but if they can't store them there, that's reality. Oh, it's not right. found. I just are you comfortable, in, in. Sally? Yes, you are. I am. I am comfortable if we if we make sure that there's language in the permit. It states the boats have been decontaminated. Okay, so should expected we for zebra mussels and other. Aquatic. I think we should make that part of the boat. Can we alter the boat? We haven't voted yet, and I just wanted to make one quick point. Um, I, of course, completely agree that our elected Parks and Recreation Commission should do that. That's a great suggestion. But it's their, the voters elected them to set the policies for the beach. They didn't elect us. And I would prefer that we give them great suggestions like you are. I'm not at all disputing the, the, the quality of the suggestion, only simply that it gets weird when Nicole and Fred Nick and the other commissioners aren't on the call for us to be making policy for that elected board. Well, I'm as, saying, as the Conservation Commission representative and of this board, I would vote no if I can't have some assurance that they have have language and protection for the for the lake via. We all have jobs. Um, via uh, contamination of the boats. If if I can't be exactly. you know, as assured as is humanly possible, and we all know that that's and never. Besides happens. which, we all have a charge for open space, recreation, historic preservation, affordable housing. These are things that we're charged with overseeing. So to say we don't have a right to make a judgment on these factors, I think is wrong. Exactly. We do have, we not only have a right, we have a responsibility to make, consider Make note things. of the time. I got 100% agree with Tom. So Tom, would you <laughs> accept uh, uh, Sally's amendment, friendly amendment to your motion? Or yeah. So I move to amend the motion to include that the license have a third item where the kayak owner who wants a rack uh, agrees to wash that kayak in advance. Or decontaminate. I mean, there are ways to do it. You can just put your boat out and upside down in the sun for a, a few days and that. Right, so de yeah. excuse me, so decontaminate. Yeah before st storing it on. Wash it with bleach, whatever. I mean, there are all different ways to decontaminate, to make sure that your boat's decontaminated. It's been sitting in your garage all winter. It's fine, um, you know. But not all. Okay, so you have them. Okay, so that was my amendment. Decontamination. Yes. Okay, second. So vote on that. Yes. So yes. vote on the amendment. It. And Steve seemed to think that this was fine and not a problem. And in fact, it might even already be there, so. Right. So well, there's a third sign, though. I I'm thought, sorry. I thought the discussion was around adding a third sign. Well, the third sign would would um, go on the raft or near the raft. Go near the raft. Has to stay where it is because it has all the other right. policies. But this this amendment that we're talking about is is the application to yeah. store a boat there. Right. Okay. It has nothing to do with the sign. So Jay seconded it. So. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Steve? Now we have to vote on the money. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Steve? Now we vote on the Steve? item. Aye. Vote. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> but that's well, the 20,000. That uh, that uh, well, that's just for the amendment that right. they need to add in the language about the decontamination. All right. Okay. Now, so now we have to vote on the money. We accept the, uh, the uh, 
$20,000 for the- uh, Actually, Tom made that motion. Oh, that's right. You can yeah. second. Yeah. I will second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Steve? Aye. <laughs> All right, unanimous. Town of Stockbridge, $85,000 ice gland invasive insect treatment. Motion to approve. Second. <laughs> All in favor, any discussion? Aye. 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 Steve? Aye. <laughs> All right. Right now we're going back sign. to the internal sign, sign in ice cream. I make a motion we deny the sign for a year or until the next cycle for sign. evaluation. <laughs> okay, With, we'll withdraw. Since okay. my philosophy was not accepted by the board, I accept that. And so therefore we should uh, delay the year. <laughs> Okay. You got to vote. No, we don't. Minute. I'm still writing. Hang on. All right. So withdraw for one year. Patrick made the motion. Do I have a second? Gary second. seconded it. And um, all in favor? Aye. 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 We're not done. You got to give us one second. One, I would like to make a motion. We pull the 65000 back for the composting toilet. Hang on just one second. Steve? In favor. Aye. Okay, cool. I just I didn't need to get his I need to get his vote. So yes, we're going to make a recommendation to pull back the sixty five thousand from the composting toilet. Second motion seconded. Good. We, if we fund a toilet, what does that fall under? Open space. It's under recreation. Oh, recreation. <laughs> well, you know okay. the, the, uh, the history on this is you got a that, <laughs> that yeah. Hang on. The history on this is that my that we um, my husband and I have run or did run um, canoe races at the boat ramp for twenty five years. There was also the Josh Billings, and my husband undertook having to. Um, because, you know, people were peeing on Henry Williams's lawn and he wasn't <laughs> about it. So, um, so we, um, we undertook to arrange for there to be toilets there throughout the summer. Josh took care of September and we went, he went, he went funds hunting to Canyon Ranch, the Arcadian shop. Um, we used the funds, the funds from our canoe races to help fund this, um, to fund the portable toilets. And he got fed up with doing it, and we we uh, transferred the information over to the another some other people who are running the canoe race now. So we thought, well, wouldn't it be good if we didn't have to move the, the portable toilets in and out all the time, and wouldn't it be nice to have a nice composting toilet? So we did some preliminary research about having composting toilets at the at the town beach or the town um, boat ramp. And it turned out to be very expensive, like ridiculously expensive, $65,000. And then and then the maintenance on it turned out to be um, impractical. So the town said, we'll do the portable toilets. So that's why we're withdrawing this. Okay, so now we're voting whether or not to approve that. We're re voting to re to re to put the sixty five thousand back into the general fund. How many toilets do I get for sixty five thousand? I think you got one. 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 It was one. expensive. Yeah. We tried to do it at a church that we're involved with. Yeah. So yeah. one toilet. <laughs> one toilet. So who wants to second that motion? Gary, did you? Oh, second? I did. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, my, my second question is this, and we don't have to decide this now, but it's just something to think about. This is a very strange year because we had this large windfall that was uncovered. And in the past, you've done, you put money into open space, for example, that $20,000. We actually designated some of it as a statement of our priorities, your priority. I was not on the board at the time. <laughs> Similarly, we have a housing trust fund that during the year may have act, uh, the ability to take action on items and it would be nice to not have to have a special town meeting to take that action. And I would suggest maybe we take some of the money in that half a million dollars that's left over and put it into housing and open space. Good because, idea. What? Good idea, I said. Good idea. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but before we do anything else, I just have to, we have to vote the admin. Uh, a question to Patrick's comment. I, so that we don't have to go to a special meeting, but 
there has to be a special meeting anyway, does there not, if this, if such a project should come up? No, because the Housing Trust Fund is, money that goes to the Housing Trust Fund, there's a, its own board, it can make decisions. But that we designated. But if we yeah, but you can't. What's that, Michael? Here to housing trust. No, but we're not. Oh you're not God. saying that we apply all that to the housing trust. Oh God, no. I just am saying that. I mean, for example, we we there's sometimes things come up like maybe somebody wants to sell a piece of property very inexpensively for affordable. You know, so it's he's selling it under market. So those, as those opportunities come up, if we're in a position to act rather than waiting a year when the house is sold. Well, you have the housing trust fund in, in place for that, right? Right. But it's talking about adding more funds to it. Well, I think if we, for those relatively small things, you have the funds. If a big project we comes don't. up, we don't then I funds. think you're going to want a special pound meeting anyway. Let me give you an example. If someone approached us about uh, a house that it is value of 700,000, wanted to put on the affordable rolls and sell to the town for 350. It'd be great if we could evaluate something like that. Well, I think something like that is, is big. Mm -hmm. It warrants a special town meeting. So I, I, I think we got a, I think we should get a legal opinion on this. Okay, yeah. please. We could, however, without any, we could designate undesignated funds. I mean, completely unencumbered funds. We could designate to go into the affordable housing reserve or and or the open space reserve. Right, but there'd still be a process associated with that. Right. Okay. It's just and the different buckets, right? it's just no, putting it in a different no, no. That's not what Patrick's asking. Though. I know. To... Yeah, but I'm just saying that that would be one thing that we could do. And right. and I that would be legal. <laughs> and I'm not not in favor of adding money to the housing trust. I mean, I, I would be, since we seem to be, you know, wealthy beyond, beyond our wildest dreams, um, I, would, I would not mind seeing another 100,000 going into the housing trust fund. I don't know how I feel about that, but about your first suggestion, I had a comment. Let's say we took the whole extra windfall amount and we divided it between housing and open space. And, and so it was designated. This is a very weird time in the life of humanity. And you have no idea what's going to be affected by the Russian war or whatever we're calling it and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I wouldn't want to vote for taking the whole amount no. and pre-designating it. No. I would still want something in undesignated. Right. Well, we okay. still would have something okay. in undesignated. Okay. And then this, the second thing that I just want to make clear is it can't get from CPC to anywhere else without meetings. Right. I mean, Tom is right. This doesn't create a slush fund. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that's clear. How that we, even with our discretion, we I'm could vote. I mean, uh, the, the, the trust fund is in the slush fund. It's basically that <laughs> where it's a, the town saying that, that having housing available for various income levels is important to it. It's not. But we can, we can put the money in reserve. We right. can do that. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't, based on what you said, Carol, yes, the best option be leaving it in undesignated? Because it gives us the best flexibility. Yes. Right now, we're going to move to 10%. So you can see, based on what you did today, what your balances will be in each of the categories. And then you'll still have 300 and something thousand in undesignated. It just seems like, based on your comments, Right. Not be in an open space, or we just put the ten percent required and let the rest go. That would be my, giving the maximum flexibility to the sport. That would be my druthers. Just let me. However, just, Sally also suggested that we literally take some of that money and stick it in Jay's housing trust. Well, not Jay's, but in the housing trust. The difference being that the, the housing trust fund is CPC's undesignated is a different animal than the trust fund. Exactly. Yeah. And the more, the, the quicker we build up, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, a nest egg in the housing trust fund, the more likely we are able to actually apply it to do good in town. However, I, I just think uh, at this juncture, we need maximum flexibility. I think we, we all agree that affordable housing is a priority, open space is a priority. But I mean, what would have, you know, could, and we also know, as you pointed out, Patrick, that there are ways of funding things through a bond, right. through CPC. But I think we really, I mean, what if, for instance, uh, Mackinac Camp were suddenly to come on the market? No. <laughs> and a developer has really ambitious projects. I mean, we might want a good chunk of change to protect that property for open space, for affordable housing, and any number of things. Uh, you know, an opportunity might come with the DeSisto property. Maybe that goes back on the market. Who knows? Maybe there's an opportunity to save 200 acres in our watershed uh, where endangered species are in the wet. I completely would support that, Tom. Pardon? I would completely support that. That's why I sent you the thing on the bonding. So that we could think about, well, if it costs a million and we could do 50,000 a year for 20 years by bonding CPA revenues yeah. in the future. So I, I think uh, I would suggest, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I, I think we've made huge progress today. And I think we can sort of be thinking about these things, but I suggest that we take a pause and- Can I just say one, one thing on this? The difference between putting it into a CPA designated fund, like taking some of the money that's undesignated and putting it into um, open space and taking some money and putting it into the town housing trust is that the town housing trust has the ability to spend it. Yes. Whereas um, that's what I was trying the to open say. space, we would have to go back to meeting. Right. That was that was my only thought on that. That right. that might be that was my that thought might thought give that might give right. them the opportunity to say, okay, this property came on the market, we're bidding. Well, I think, I mean, we're allocating 125 for the housing trust this year. Yeah. And we have how much from last year? 100. 100. So we have 225. That allows the housing trust to. But Tom, we we also. We also were working under a false assumption at the last meeting that we were going to near, we had our request exceeded the amount of money we had available. It turned out we have a million dollars available. It's it's not I, apples I, apples I, I don't I don't go for this. We're suddenly wealthy. Why not spend it? I, 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 I think a million dollars. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that things the could reserves have never been modest. the reserves have never been at left at five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, when have you when have you ever said oh, we're going to leave Usually you leave 30% in or something for the next year, you know, the 10% in each or 15% in each. This is really unprecedented. And I just think we should. And I also think that there's a point to be made, um, you know, that the townsfolk have, have entrusted us with this money. And um, I think that it, it is certainly, if you look at the national polls, it's certainly, um, a high priority and, and in, particularly in this town where we really, really, really need to have um, affordable housing. Um, and I know that that for some people, they, they envision slums and all that, but that's not what this is. This is moderate income housing. This, you know, if you buy a house for $325,000, that is not a modest house necessarily um, in Pitts, my, my son and daughter-in-law are, are in the process of, of selling their house and they're talking about $250,000 and that's in Pittsfield. We have nothing, nothing like that in this town that, you, that a, a young couple with kids can afford to buy. And I think that's sad. Um, I think it's it's untenable. I think it's sad. I think it's disgraceful, actually. Um, so that's my reason. That's my only reason for thinking that we should take some of this money that we that we've found, thanks to Michael and Patrick, and we should put it into something that's really part of the future of our town. Okay, may I just make one more comment here? Uh, we've made huge projects. One hundred thousand last year. One hundred twenty-five thousand. This year, 
not everybody in the town agrees with your perspective, which happens to be mine. Affordable housing could be quite controversial. Pine Woods was controversial when we first pushed it. You remember that. Yeah, I do. People there were talking about, what are we going to do with these people? How are they, these people going to get into town? Well, these people are people who work in Stockbridge and had drive a car just like the rest of us and all this kind of thing. But I, I think that even the 125 is going to get some resistance at town meeting. And I, I wouldn't want to endanger that or, you know, we've made this request. We're making progress. Just a thought. But I, I just think that if we double that allotment this year, it's it has potential for blowing <clears throat> this thing up into a controversy that I just soon not have. Well, the other argument that could be made is that we've waited way too long to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I, we, I you, would know, make... you know as well as I do, you you and I and Linda were there at, from the very beginning. Yeah. And that was the affordable housing component was one of the most important parts of us doing that. Absolutely. Because we saw 20 years ago that this town was going to be to, to be primarily second homeowners. And the second homeowners, frankly, should be just thrilled to death because who are they getting to on their fire departments? Who are they getting on their police departments? Who are they getting to wait on them at the tables at the Red Lion Inn? You know, who are these people who work in this town? They say there are people who live here because they can't afford to live here. Just saying. I, I, I would like to make just one point uh, for whatever it's worth that as the housing trust develops we have to take deliberate steps we can't just jump into anything for example were we to purchase a property at the trust and to turn it over as affordable housing that property remains affordable housing ad nausea 30 years so i i think we want to move deliberately, uh, we, we've got to feel our way. We can't go from from step one to $20 million on this, for example. You know, we, we don't know what the demand is. We don't know what the inventory is. So I would caution uh, moving slowly on this project. I think we've got enough to move on right now. Well, and we can come back next year and talk about more. Yes, you we've can. We've got to get the trust up and running with deliberate guidelines and so forth. With respect to what Jay said, can I ask you a question, Sally? Yeah. Okay. We always... Can't, can't hear. Okay. Um, so, so we always received an amount of money, gave that amount of money away, except for a small pot. That's what we thought. Now, with respect to this windfall, is there any reason why we only meet once a year? What, could you as chair, I know, don't you laugh at me like that. Could you as chair schedule an additional meeting seeing as how we have so We can always have much. an additional meeting. Okay, because we have all this unexpended The only meetings. issue that she has with respect to a midterm reallocation of funds is you'd have to go to a town, right, special exactly. town meeting. And okay, so we'd have, to, we'd have to meet here and a special town meeting. But yes. that's so, been done before. Yeah, no, no, no. I, if, I'm just, if it was a good reason. It's just a point for the okay. floor. Okay. So we did to do it too. We yeah. did that. No. We did that with um, <clears throat> with DeSisto. Yeah. We, there, we we piggybacked on a special town meeting. Right. Yeah. Which we can certainly do. And but if we were to if we were to want to do something that would require a special town meeting only for us. It's a big, it's a big hairy deal to mount a special town meeting. So it's, it's not something you can just say, okay, Michael, just put it in the paper. Um, <laughs> Take us off. I'd like to make a motion that we add a hundred thousand dollars to the, uh, the affordable housing trust fund. Uh, in addition to the one twenty five we've done, that leaves us with the composing toilet pullback. It leaves us four hundred thousand dollars in reserves. Patrick, are you I'm not. Uh, hold on. I, it just strikes me that like. 
the, the town voted to do CPC. And that means that the money should be, you know, applied to community preservation. And this is the most important area of our community that needs to be preserved, arguably. Uh, Patrick, you're making a motion, but Jay, if I heard right, suggested we not go through with this. I understand. Motion. And you're doing I made a motion this notwithstanding anyway. the chair of the this trust's recommendation. I I would like to see more money going to. Well, oh, first of all, we need a second on this motion. And if we don't get one, then it doesn't go. Sally, this is Steve. I'm, I'm not going to second it, but if it does go to vote, I'll, I'll abstain because I just need to think about it longer. But I, I okay. do apologize. I have, to, I have to drop off. Okay. Well, thank you for coming, Steve. Steve, yep. thank you. We're, for, yep. we're almost done. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So we do not have a second. Sally, uh, I could second. I'd ask if there's anyone else listening no. in who might want to. Okay. I'm actually going to I'm actually going to second that. So we have a motion to add a hundred thousand dollars to the um, to the affordable housing reserve or a hundred uh, affordable housing committee, and now we can vote. Wait, to uh, which just, entity? I'm sorry. To the uh, um, affordable the housing, the housing trust. Trust. Yeah. As opposed to the committee. There's right. The, the yeah the the, the town well, housing trust. trust. But it's a trust. Okay. It's a fund. So, to, so the, this is clean. All right. So, all in favor? Can we discuss the motion? Absolutely. So, uh, I would very much not want to have to get up at a meeting and argue against this proposal. So you're voting no. <laughs> I am, but I, I just want to explain <laughs> why I'm voting no. And it has nothing to do at all with my not supporting the ideas the behind it. Totally right. I'm not suggesting. So we're just, I, I just want a clean up down vote on this. Mm -hmm. um, so Jay? No. Linda? No. Tom? No. Carol? No. Yes. No. Gary? No. Steve? Abstain. He's gone and he said tomorrow. So the motion does not pass. So that's one, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, twos. Yes. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. We have to vote for the admin. Right. Oh, yes. Okay. I move that we give $4,999. We have to vote for $10,000 to 000. be put into admin. Free will. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I second. <laughs> what are we voting on? The $10, admin fund. dollars in admin. Oh, oh. Okay. We haven't done that yet. Okay. Yeah. We have to do that. Yeah. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We're unanimous. We are without. Uh, is, are there folks out there who want to say something to us? No. Okay. Shoveling. We're done, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great job. Good meeting. Um, Thank you. Great.